let's take a look at a canopy for our bed. So these of course come from our corners and you can actually use your footboard and your headboard to give you help with all of that. Now you have to determine the size. So maybe it's seven feet high. So we go up to one foot before this all begins. Remember how we walk this across? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's our seven foot height. And so remember you have to have a vertical up and I'm using the headboard now, just the headboard. You have to have a vertical up to measure. Let's put all our verticals up. That way we can keep our measuring. So that's the first thing to do. Get that headboard up. Let's get the baseboard, the footboard up as well. Now we put this in as half a foot which is really just six inches. So six inches is that big. That seems rather large. We can trim it down, but let's see how it looks. If it looks okay, then we'll leave it. But if it looks too big, here's, I think I've got, this is only three quarters of a foot. I didn't put a whole half a foot on this drawing. We, this is, how you have to go with this sort of thing. You have to try something first and be ready and willing to change it. it remember, it's a, like a puzzle. It's like a game. And you have to keep playing the game and, until you come out the winner. So leave plenty of time for this. And the more you can enjoy the game or begin to like the game, the easier these drawings will become for you. So I'm using my right vanishing point to bring this measurement out from the, from the wall. Even that small half foot, it was crucial. All of these lines where I took it, walked it back to the wall, and got my seven feet and brought it over. What I'm looking for is the dimension that's on the same plane, facing the same side. I have to use this then, don't I? Because it's on the same plane, facing the same side. Now, when I go the other way, everything else is facing that way. So, so this is maybe not what you were expecting, but these are facing, they're all, this is facing this way, top and bottom. This is facing this way, top and bottom. Now, I don't have the other side, if I wanted to make it square, I would put it in at half a foot. So, and remember, we don't know if we like that. We don't know if we like the size of that. So we're gonna just put it in now for the time being until we make up our mind whether we like it or not. So here's half a foot. In the distance, it looks quite reasonable, but up close, it's looking a little gigantic. But your references, your references will tell you. Now this is a place where we ought to make the full square. That way we know that we're missing a corner. The more information you have, and sadly that means the more lines you have, the better chance you will have of understanding what you've just done. Because <laughs> it's not always 100% clear. Okay, so now I'm missing another line here. Now some people are very disciplined and they can put dotted lines for these inside lines as they go, but I don't, I don't have that kind of patience. So, but if you do, 
cultivate that. That will be a really a great way for you to begin to win these games. So it's better for me. I don't know if I need that information. I have no idea, but I'm going to have it anyway. So now I can see top and bottom. They make sense. And I haven't finished top and bottom here. There. And I didn't do it over here. Now, I haven't done this, which is crucial. I've got to see, I've got to understand this whole thing. So, be careful, watch what you're doing. So, there's the wall, there's the half a foot. So, I'm up. Now, I'm on this line, because I'm the one that's closest to the wall so make sure when you're doing this that you keep your eye on what's the same so I'm starting on that corner because I need it to come across exactly there okay so what that's given me is the underside of the canopy now I can bring the rest of these lines up. And a thorough understanding of this is what we're after. A thorough understanding of how these corner posters it's a four poster bed with canopy how that's going to line up here with everything else we have now and remember you go too far now everybody's different I think I find it easier to go too far with those, but maybe you don't. Maybe you find them confusing if you go too far. But it's really the only way to discover where they end. So just keep checking top and bottom. Are, if the bottom is going to the right vanishing point, the top must do that too. One more to do. Okay, so now we have it. Now we know there's how these look. And your headboard would be within that area. And if, you, and if there's a footboard, there isn't always a footboard. But inside there, whatever you did to one post, you would have to do to another. So supposing you did keep these the way that they are, and you had a square, a square portion. It began with a square. But then that be lucky, then you would have less to do. So this would be the way you could trap.
keep everything symmetrical, keep everything the same. So this big chunky square here is really the same as that one, only they look very different. The reason again for drawing these squares at the bottom is to make you conscious of the fact that you're always going to see two sides. So you have to represent them accurately. Now, if you had a situation where the whole thing was round and round shapes all the way through it, you again, you would need to transfer that information from one pillar to the next. Supposing you had, uh, this will look very strange, but supposing you had, don't forget that circles go over above eye level. Now, if this was small, and it would be small, you may not want to draw the, the circle method to do this. So, but you just keep asking yourself, is it above eye level or is it below? And um, what else is going on? And you just keep your eye on it. Maybe it starts out as a square. And then it becomes something else as it goes down. It's got to be the... And this is below. So it will have a circle that goes like that. And you may follow this all the way down. But having those boxes, and you're doing it all freehand, but having those boxes is what's make, going to make this accurate. And then all you would have to do is transfer these, this information onto everything else. And you would have where that would be here. It might, it would look slightly different. You'd have to find the center of it. So you would have to make your X. Find your center. And start building your shapes around that center. And you'd have to eyeball how wide or how big to make everything, but it could be done. The height of everything, it's facing us. So you can take a measure from there and transfer it to the bottom without any worries. They're going to be the same because the height is the same distance from us. The, the heights of things, these verticals, they're the same distance from us throughout their length. So that's not a problem. Now, you're going to come up against a bunch of things drawing this drawing, but hopefully some of these little ideas are going to help you figure that out. Figure out how to solve the problem. So there's my true middle. Here's my true middle up here. So the center would be here. And I would just so figure that out in pencil and then go in with your pen and start to modify it. You know how sometimes they have a little... And once you get to enjoy playing this game, you'll want to try all kinds of things and but it really begins with drawing from life beginning to look at what's around you 
and making observations. So you could go on to do all kinds of things with that. It's adding the detail, but the geometric shapes and the simple shapes first.